chaps, welcome to my channel. I'm Rebecca, thank you for joining me. To all those who are new here, welcome to my kitchen and to all the, uh, the regular cretins. Hello lovelies, welcome back, hello. So um, today I will be doing a recipe video for you with every intention of filming it on the proper camera and giving you a proper edited video and you know, but if I may, if you'll allow me, I would like to show you the state of play. So, come with me. Um, we have a cassette here, going into my rather old camera. Yeah, that's not having it, is it? That's a very, very sad state of affairs. So, you've got me raw, <laughs> once again, all the joys. <laughs> So, yes, here we are. So what we'll need for the recipe is two ounces of butter, just over a pound of carrots, one egg, two pounds of potatoes boiled in their skins. So a bit like that. If they're large, just sort of cut them in half. Some Worcester sauce, salt and pepper, two ounces of breadcrumbs, I've just put these through the oven a little bit and then done the cheese grater with them. Uh, three slices was that. And one ounce of oatmeal, which I found, you know, just a good handful. And then half a pint of stock, which I don't have. I don't have a stock cube or anything, so I've just put a few peelings and scrag ends and bits and bobs in here. Boiled that up for a bit. I don't think it's going to be... Um, I don't think it's going to make a very good uh, stock, but hey ho, we're working with it, dears. We're working with it. So, grab yourself a cup of tea because this might take a bit of a while. <laughs> I've got mine on the go. <laughs> so, first port of call. We are going to move that out of the way. I've got just in case you're wondering, I've got one hob on. It's just because of my Reynards, my finger. Sometimes it flares up. Sometimes it doesn't. Apologies for the lighting. Everything else. It is what it is, chaps. It is, isn't it? Right then, so, the first port of call. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees, 350 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. Boil the potatoes in salted water for 15 minutes until cooked. Drain and rinse under cold water until cool enough to handle. Peel and discard the skins. Mash the potatoes with the egg and season well with the salt and pepper. Right, we can do that. Right, so I'll just do this last one. I've done most of them just because you don't want to see a video of me taking out. I mean, it takes it's it's a bit of a long-winded job, but you get there. If you boil potatoes in their skins, rumor has it you keep the sugars, the natural sugars that are in the potato, actually within the potato. So it just makes it a bit sweeter. I mean, I just think basically you could use any kind of, you know, whatever you do for your mash, really. I don't, you know, it's your kitchen, it's your meal, you do what you like with it, don't you? So, there we are. But I thought for the sake of trying to be authentic, I'd um, follow the recipe as best as I could. Because this book is a Reader's Digest book, which I don't know if you've heard of, but they're quite, they're quite good Reader's Digest. And what the people who have made this book have done is they've gone through various country houses and recipes and things like that and um, compiled about, I think it was about 400 different recipes from back in the day. There's an Edwardian breakfast, there is some Victorian stuff in there. Not quite Mrs. Beaton's, but you know, near enough. And then there's all manner of things, all manner of occasions, christenings, birthdays, you know, cricket on the cricket on the green, that sort of thing. It's rather twee, rather twee. Right then, what are we doing? Putting the egg in. Hang on, what are we doing first? We're mashing the potatoes. Okay. If you want a fine mash, you can always just use a fork and really give it a good go. But we're not making you know, douche potatoes here. We're making a rough and ready peasant meal. I think this is very much peasant food. So, you know, from, this, from the sounds of it, it's carrots, oatmeal, potatoes, 
and then something to flavour flavour stuff. It does say to add in some chopped fresh parsley, um, but I just don't have any to hand, so I've missed out on that one. But I do like a bit of fresh parsley, it has to be said. Right. So we're nearly there. I mean, you can mash the potatoes with the skin in as well, as long as you've given it a really good scrub and it's free of sort of blemishes and that sort of thing, then absolutely you can, you can do that. Not a problem. Oh, I found another bit of skin there. And a little eye. Come here. Come here, come here, come here. So it's just, we're just hanging, chaps. We're just hanging <laughs> because there's nothing else to be done about it. Right, so that is that. God, it's rather sticky, this. Hopefully it's okay. Oh well, I can't see. I can't see what that bang was. Oh dear, never mind. I won't worry about it till we get there. I'll worry about it later. For now, we're busy, aren't we, chap? We're busy. So egg going in. Shaky is now laying. Oh, it was so cute the other day. I got. I came back to home for a very quick cup of tea in the middle of my shift. And I sat down with my brew, and all I heard was and I was like, she's not going to shut up until I go and say hello, is she? Because she knows I'm here now. So I went in to see her, and she was like, and she, she was right next to her nest box. So I went to her nest box, and egg! I was like, well done, shaky baby, well done. And the moment I saw that she'd done an egg and I was like, well done, Shakes, you know, giving her a nice little cut, hug and cuddle and everything. She went straight through my legs to the feed and she started eating away. She wanted to show me she'd laid her egg. I was like, shaky baby. Oh, she's adorable. If, you, if you're thinking about getting chickens, there are worse things you can do in life. But um, just remember that they do like company. So you're best to get maybe three because then if one dies they've still got company shaky's the last of the lot she's on her own but she's very used to just milling around with with me and mummy and the dog and the cat so you know she's she's a happy little chicken so we're just going to do oh we need salt and pepper in this don't we da, 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 da. going that so I'm gonna guess the eggs just to bind it I did make this last time without the egg and it did hold okay so if you don't want to use your one egg week's ration when you're not actually it's not actually going to be the star of the show then you can do you can do it's fine it worked for me last time I didn't use an egg but I just thought I'd follow the recipe as per just so that you guys have seen it. Right, there we are. We're getting there. I'll tell you what, making a fork makes all the difference, you know. So, there we are, that'll do. That'll do for now. Right, the next thing mashed potatoes. Da, 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 da. Using your fingers, spread half the butter over the base and sides of an 18 centimeter, 7 inch diameter deep, loose based cake tin. Right, okay, well, this is Granny's old cake tin, and it's what she always made her Christmas um, cake in, and it doesn't have a loose, you can't lift it, so I'm using tin foil, but also it'll help save the tin, you know. So I'm wondering if I need to, put, oh no, it, it's got to stick the breadcrumbs, hasn't it? Okay, right, in we go then. Right, let's see if we can get this.
fluttered around so it's got to basically enough to stick the stick the breadcrumbs onto the side I did last time I made this I did sort of have I had enough breadcrumbs for half the side and then the other half was you know au naturel it was in its birthday suit as they say and um, yeah definitely the breadcrumb side was a lot nicer it looked a lot better it was a lot easier to to work with so just keep greasing this all the way around let's hope it does the job again if you're short on butter I imagine Marge or even to a degree lard would do it you know it's just something for the breadcrumbs to stick to really isn't it if you don't want to sacrifice your butter um you know the worst comes to the worst like i said i mean if you haven't got it to hand you haven't got it to spare on your ration for the week then you haven't got it to spare have you you know i mean we make do don't we dears right i think that'll do let's just push that bit in come on there we go spread it around lovely nice. Get your fingers in there. Woohoo! Right, so the next bit is to shake the breadcrumbs gently into the tin to coat the inside deep evenly. Okay, breadcrumbs, where have I put them? Here we are. Shake them in, shake them in. God, this is a lot of breadcrumbs going in there. Blimey! I can see this getting messy. Here we are, have a bowl. Woohoo! Yeah, baby. There's no way this is going to use all these breadcrumbs. There's no way. No way. Keep going round, keep going round. Well, I think it I think it might be thin. I mean, it's a bit cold in this kitchen, so maybe the uh well, I can't leave them in there. That's ridiculous. There's plenty, there's plenty left over. So they can be used for another recipe of some description. But yeah, put the bottom ones down, that make it easier on that. There we go. Well, they haven't really coated the side very well. Let's pat them down and see if they can attach. It says that they should be toasted. So I toasted them, I, I just put the slices in the toasting in the oven and just let them go a bit golden. You can buy them pre-made from the shop in tubs, but I've got, you know, I've got some spare old slices of bread, so there we go. Right, that'll do. So that's that. Next, we have to spoon the potato over the base and up the sides of the tin to make a case two and a half centimetres, one inch thick. Right, spoon it in. Right, well let's just work that up. In it goes, in it goes, like so. Around like this. Uh, spreading the mashed potato around the side of the greased tin will be easier to do if you lay the tin on its side. Right, well. Sort the base out first, I think. So let's get that all done. So I could probably stick you up here and look, look down or something, but you know, it's... I'm always a bit concerned that it might get a bit boring for you, but um, as I'm just doing this little task, I might as well tell you about how I've done. So I'm now at the end of week five, and with the pennies and everything, I have come in just under budget. Woohoo! So when I've uh, when I finish this little messy job, I'll show you the I'll show you the deets. But I've come in with ninety four pence left to spare. I know, I know. You <laughs> think what can I get for ninety four p? Yeah, so I've spent, for five weeks worth of eating, I have spent 49 pounds and, 
I don't know, what, what does it make it? 6p? Something like that. So it's just me on my own. Um, buying a few reduced items along the way in order to come in under that budget. But yes, it can be done. Decent quality, decent quality items, produce to work with. You do have to cook everything from scratch. Obviously, that doesn't include that costing is just for the the raw materials and things. It doesn't include the energy that you're using or anything like that in order for you to cook from scratch and all of these things. Um, but I think it's it's fairly it's it's fairly um, a readily sort of. Uh, pricing list really for what for what you could for what you could have you know what you could find in your area I think my price the prices must be fairly similar across the board really unless you're in Japan I, I, I I'm sure I heard in Japan that a cabbage is about 10 pounds that's insane absolutely insane right then well there's the case there's the case that's what we're looking like so we'll put that to one side for now that's got to go in the oven and cook for a bit but now we need to crack on with the filling just after I show you so Week four, I didn't spend any more than what I've already shown you. That was £7.11, wasn't it? So that was that for £7.11. So this is now week five. And so it's a litre. I had to borrow a jar of milk because I didn't have enough. So I've had to borrow a jar of milk, so that's coming at £1.20. Uh, then some veg and some cheese, you see. That 165, that's two weeks worth of cheese, 83 pence per week. So, you know, however. Um, but yes, so that's that's what I've come in at for my 50 pounds for five weeks food shop. And uh, the cheese I got was a little Staffordshire chunk. Very nice, very nice. Yes. Right then, so. Next, moving on, put the tin in the center of the oven and bake for 30 minutes or until the potato is very lightly browned. Meanwhile, to make the filling, heat the remaining butter in a saucepan, add the carrots, cover and saute for 10 minutes. Oh God, we ain't got 10 minutes. We can't stand there for 10 minutes. But anyway, we'll get the general gist. Well, this is the only pan I've got. For... Oh, actually, no, hang on. Let me do this. Let me make Miss Cock. Let's see what I've got left. Uh, if I get a fresh. Oh, hello. Right, let's do this into a fresh bowl. And then I can use this pan, can't I, to do the, do the, the filling. So, whee, and it goes. My lordy, that looks like a very, very, very weak stock. But it'll do the job. It'll do. It'll do. So that's what I mean. It's like if you haven't got a stock cube or anything, just see what you've got knocking around in your veggie basket. You can use, you can use onion skins, you know, the brown onion skins. That'll add a bit of flavour and colour. Peelings. The tips and tops of, if you've got, you know, I've got spring onions and the odd bit of leek left. Anything really, just to make a bit of flavoured water, I suppose. I mean, there is a proper way of doing stock, but quite frankly, I just wanted to get this done. So, we're gonna stick the rest of the butter in here. We'll light this hob. Ooh, there we are. On it goes. Right, turn that down a smidge. Right, so butter in. Does it say carrots in? Yeah, add the carrots, cover and saute for 10 minutes. Okie dokie. 
Righty ho. Butter in, carrots in. I tell you what, this is a lovely way. This was, this I'm sure mummy said this was the way that granddad used to cook his carrots because it, it locks in the sweetness and they basically cook in their own juices. So it makes the carrots really sweet. It's the same with the onions. You, you can do onions the same way and it makes it so sweet. Which lid am I working with? This one. There we go. That'll do. <laughs> but yes, it, 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 they, they cook in their own juices and they slowly... It ha you have to have it on a very low heat, otherwise they'll just burn and, and it'll all be horrible. But, yeah, if you have it on a nice low heat, covered in their own juices and they'll start to sweat and all the rest of it, oh, it'll be so nice. Oh, it, it, I swear to you, if you've never had carrots like that, please please have a go at doing them because it's absolutely gorgeous right then so once they have sauteed for 10 minutes you're going to stir in the oatmeal because by that point they'll have made enough liquid from their own juices um, and cook stirring for two minutes blend in the Worcester sauce and stock and cook gently for 30 minutes until the mixture has thickened and the liquid is absorbed. Stirring frequently towards the end of cooking to prevent it from sticking. Mix in the parsley and season well. Spoon the carrot mixture into your potato basket and then return it to the oven for five minutes. Remove from the oven and leave to stand for two minutes and then carefully remove the basket from the tin and transfer it to a heated serving plate and there you are folks so while this is just doing its thing um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell in regards to how it tastes the texture the flavor it's kind of got a flavor I can't describe and the texture is something you probably will never ever have had it, all I can say is it's like it's made out of bubbles but it's like bubble tea or like bubble I mean I, you know you've got to try it to believe it you really have but um let's move these around a bit so yeah definitely give it a go it's it really is an interesting meal and it's really hearty it's really thick it's gonna it's gonna I mean, I'm someone who I love my food. I can I can eat for England. I really can. But even I can't get through this quick. I think it's it's like four or five portions because it's so just. I mean, stodge is the wrong word, but that's the that's the uh, that's the league we're playing in. You know, we we are thinking stodgy wartime, but it's. But it's not. It's it's so peculiar that I absolutely wanted to share this with you, this recipe. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about this week, I might as well roll, roll the two videos into one now because, you know, I was going to do you two, but hey. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about was New Year's resolutions and things like that. Now, I... Don't, I'm, I've, I've, in my time I've done my different New Year resolutions in a multitude of we ways, right down to having a spreadsheet to just having notes and, you know, in my head. You, you know, mm. so if you do start to wane or anything, I thought, well, what I would do, bearing in mind what I went through last year and how... How humbling! There was a, there was a massive piece of humble pie that I ate last year, big time. You know, you you definitely learn to. I know that you've got the cliche of sweat, don't sweat the small stuff, but yeah, it really puts into perspective what is important. And um, so this year, I will be. I'm doing in my diary. Because I've just bought it yesterday. I've got, again, I've got to catch up with myself. You know, it's all been running away. But everyone seems to be dropping at work like flies. It's ridiculous. I've done two extra shifts this week already. You just think, blimey. This is my first lie-in and day off 
in ages. It really is. Um, yeah, what I'm doing this year is I am in my paper diary, but you can put it on your phone or whatever works for you, is I'm putting down what I have achieved that day. So you think to yourself, I want this end result to come about. And when you've achieved it, you can say, I've achieved that. It could be something as simple as, depending on you know how you are in your life, it could be something as simple as getting up and actually getting dressed, you know? Or it could be something like um, cutting down the trees at the bottom of the garden. It could be something like washing the car. It could be something sorting out your finances. It could be seeing friends. It could be going to going finally going to a yoga session you know it could be whatever it is because no two people in the world ever are going to ever have the same diaries because you are unique you are beautifully individual you are unique so and there's there's no right or wrong here you, can, you literally cannot get it wrong because all you're doing is writing down what you have achieved that day there's no extra effort involved because it again it's just what you're doing with your day and it's just it's just taking note i think kids kids you know when you as you get older the years just start to come around so quick and and before you know you don't even know what you've done with the year you don't even know what you've done with the day you know whereas when you're young i think as a child there's so much new stuff that you're taking note of, that you're doing and you're trying and you're attempting at. And I think that's how you can grab a sense of having a much fuller life than you already, than, than you, you have it. It's just that you don't necessarily notice how you're spending your days, what you're doing with them. So by actually having to write down something that you've achieved, like hubby came round, he'll I've been told I've got to mention this. Hello, Ben. Hello. Lovely. How are you doing? Um, yes. Benjamin came round the other day and he put up the net curtains for me. So that was his achievement of the day. My achievement of the day was, you know, having him round. That's it. You know, something as simple as that. But it was done. I wanted Ben round. He came round, we had a nice cup of tea, we had a lovely laugh and a chin wag, and he went, that was it, done. Um, so every day I'm writing what I've achieved, that I feel I want to take note of. It's something a little bit out of the ordinary, it's something a little bit that, you know, it, yeah, this is, this is new. And then I, out every seven days, I will pick one of those achievements, or one or two, to say that's what I've achieved with this week. So within this week, I think I've, I've, I've completed my cardigan, um, which I'll show you in, a, in another video. I've finished my cardigan that I was working on. So that is a big achievement for me. Yay. And then out of your week's achievements, every month, pick one, pick one or two, you know, but I mean, I, I try and say like narrow it down to one, but you know, pick one or two, because then by the end of the year, you're going to have you know, at least 12 or so achievements that you can say what you have done with the year. And it's, it's, it's not costing you any money. You're not having to give, put any extra effort in. You just have to remember to write it down. And if you, if you don't, you know, just try and remember what you did do and then just, just fill in the gaps. Or just pick a, something you've done with the week. Or something, if, if you've had a break from it, you just, whatever you do, just trying to take note of what you're doing with your days. Because that's how you're spending your life, you know? And uh, if you can then incorporate, if you know what you're aiming for by the end of this year, you say, you know, right now, okay, this time next year, I want to see this change in my life, whatever it is, then that's your aims, isn't it? And you can write your aims down. You can try and incorporate that into how you're spending your days. If you have no idea, if you've got no clue whatsoever, by writing down your achievements, as you go along the weeks, the days, the weeks, maybe even a couple of so months, it will show you where you're putting your attention. It will show you where you are spending your energy. And then you say to yourself, well, why, am I, why is that? 
why am I putting all this energy and attention and effort into, I don't know, the garden or my health or the house or seeing friends or this and the other. And um, yeah, so again, that's a, it'll help you. So, I mean, for me, my, my two aims really are to replenish some of the savings that I had because I've spent through quite a few thousands of pounds last year because I had absolutely no help whatsoever from anybody. Um, so I'd like to replenish a bit of that. And so that's a bit of savings. But then also um, to wear my own creations and be creative and, and be a bit more sort of self-expression, you know. And, you know, so I'm, I'm incorporating all of that into where I'm going. You know, none of us can know the end result. You know, I'm sure that my li those two little things there that I've just mentioned that I'm aiming for, I'm sure that the result way down the line is going to be a lot bigger than just wearing your own clothes and putting some money aside. I'm sure, you know, there's, there's a bigger, bigger achievement, you know, bigger state of play down the line. But for now, that's where you're at. No one can be a billionaire until they've been a millionaire that sort of, just that, that sort of thing and so yeah <sighs> but yes I just thought I'd share that with you that's been my thought you know when when you've um, yes when you've when you've been so reliant on other people and you've had to take a wait because I'm incredibly independent you know but when you've you know spent your days where even doing the most basic of basic things is a challenge you you learn to be a lot kinder to yourself you know I think we are all you know in a way you can be a lot harsher to yourself than you would ever be to anybody else um that you expect standards from yourself if you're anything like me you expect standards from yourself that you would never put onto another person. You'd never dream of being so harsh, but you do it to yourself. And why? Question why, you know? So yeah, again, I've learned to, I've learned to mellow, I've learned to chill, but. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll leave that with you. Um, a little philosophy at the end there. But um, thank you so much for joining me. Where are we now? 32 minutes, I think that's more, more than enough time I don't want to waste any more of your time, but uh, yes. One last time, I will show you the book now so that you can watch it, you can look at it. And what I'll do is I will make the thumbnail of this video the final result. So there we are. So have it with it, you know, have a nice slice with some greens. And um, believe me, it as if, you, if there's a family of five or six of you around the table, this will this will go the way. And if not, you're going to be eating this for three or four days. <laughs> but you're fine. Just stick it in the fridge and you're good to go. <laughs> but yeah, one last time looking at the book. And that's what we're aiming for. Thank you so much for joining me guys and I'll see you again soon. Bye.